This is a, a very a simple practice. Uh, might be very helpful for everybody, every ordinary people. Uh, what I call it, three precious pills. Uh, white pill, red pill, and blue pill. And reason why I call these things are pills, because in the West, we take a lot of pills. There's a pill for everything. So, so white pill is related with the body. The red pill is related with the speech. And the blue pill is related with the mind. Okay, so when to take these pills? For, for example, many moments in our life, if you pay close attention to yourself, you are in pain without knowing it. For example, like a pain body. What is a pain body? When you are stuck consciously or unconsciously in your pain identity. For example, a Monday morning, 9 o'clock, all around the world, everybody is professionally, they are stuck in their pain body, a collective professional pain body. Nobody is conscious of that. They don't, they're driving cars like holding like that. Their faces are like that. Body is intense. Their sense of identity is, they, they are not happy. They are not happy. It's so kind of sad, resistance, uh, blockages, very much like that. But they are not conscious. They are not conscious. Some people, it's not only Monday morning, Tuesday morning is the same. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday may be a little better. Friday afternoon, everybody is having a little enlightenment. Like they are already feeling like after good meditation, after good yoga, after good exercise, after good crying, after good talk, release. They feel that after, like a Friday afternoon. So the point is, that every moment can be Friday afternoon. Every moment can be Friday afternoon. So if you tell yourself, every moment can be Friday afternoon. If I am not caught up in that pain identity or profession, then I can be every moment in Friday afternoon. I'm free. So, so that sense of, I think, awareness, it's very important to recognize Monday morning. It's important. Immediately, Monday morning comes, you're going to work 9 o'clock, recognize your body, recognize your breath, your holding, recognize your mind. What do you take? You take pill. But not a pill in a bottle, not, not you have to, oh, I forgot my pill, in the, it's in the kitchen counter. No, you, don't, you just have to remember to take a pill, right? So, you remember? A few deep breathings. And each exhalation, you're trying to rest your body. Even you're driving, even you're walking, even you're in, in front of your computer. Feel the stillness in your body. When you're able to feel the stillness in your body, that stillness in your body, particularly the awareness of the stillness of your body, is protecting you from that pain body or from that professional pain, collective pain body is protecting you. At that moment, maybe five minutes, you are not in that. You are only one person, entire world, free, exp enjoying the Monday morning. The rest of the people are suffering, you're enjoying. Same way, second pill. Second pill is a red pill. It has to do with the silence and speech. When you take that, when you are in the mood of complaining, so if you think about, do you know somebody who complains a lot, right? And do you know somebody who complains all the time? Do you know somebody who complains 
regardless of what you do, you do this way, they complain. You do that way, they complain, right? They're complaining. And of course, you're, when you're saying yes, 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 you are thinking of somebody else. You're not thinking of you, <laughs> right? I'm talking about you. You are doing that. We do that. We all, we all do that. I do that. And especially it's very sad when you do to people that you care, you respect, you love. Like a family, it's your, your husband, your wife, your children. When you do to them, it's very sad. When you, so, but if you, are, if you say, I'm willing to be aware and I'm willing to change, then you're saying, I'm willing to be aware. That means when, kind of, you can feel, the, before even you complain, you can feel the energy is coming. Introverted, going inward, closing, shutting down. And then you can feel the energy. And then suddenly you are seeing words are forming. The sentences are coming. Vocabulary, you're choosing vocabularies. You see it before even it comes out from the mouth. You can catch yourself. Oh, my pain speech. My pain speech is opening a pain dictionary. My pain speech is opening uh, sentences, you know, uh, forming uh, pain sentences. My pain speech is creating a pain stories. My pain speech is a looking up pain object to express those things. You recognize that. That very moment, catch yourself. Open your bottle. Take out your red pill. And what do you do? Breathe out. With that recognition, I recognize pain speech. I'm creating a story. I rec I'm, I'm aware of the noise of their voices. And I'm listening to the silence. I'm listening to the silence. And I hear the silence. And I feel the silence. And I feel like I'm in a beautiful, peaceful, silent place in me that moment. That moment could be anywhere in the traffic, could be in the middle of the meeting, it could be even in the middle of the fight, intense fight. But when you draw attention to that place, it's there for you, just waiting for you. And even if somebody's fighting, you're just smiling, <laughs> enjoying the silence. And if, if you really wanted to engage with the person, you're, you're connecting with that silence, and you're listening from that silence to somebody. You will hear more. You will hear much more than you have these pain voices in your head. Let's say if you wanted to talk to that person, you don't want to be passive, you want to be engaging, engaging in that conversation with resolving some conflict. For sure, you can go ahead with that. But if you are, if you are that connected with that silence, grounded in that silence, feeling that silence, the words comes out of that are beautiful lines, beautiful poetry, beautiful kind words, incredible word of clarity, solution, comes out of that. Even you surprise, sometimes I get surprises, is it me? Of course it's you. How you cannot say it's not you? When you are fighting, screaming, you, you don't question, is it really me? That's the time you should question more. Is it really me? No, that's not you. There you're having a moment of those emotions and disconnecting yourself. But when that voice coming out of that silence, it's more your voice than voice coming out of that pain speech. It's not you. So you take that pill and, and you recognize you can do that anytime, anytime. I think that's the beauty about that. You can do anytime. Particularly, you can do before your pain speech comes out. You will, you will harm less people. If you look, if you have a good relationship with somebody, if you wanted to keep your good relationship with somebody, watch your pain speech. Take a lot of red pills. Because you look your past, wonderful relationship that you have and you did not manage to sustain, keep it. Your pain speech are the responsible to break up those relationships. Or somebody else's pain speech were the responsible 
for break up those relationships. So that's the second pill. The last pill, the third pill, is the blue pill, which is related with the mind. So pain mind. So you have to, who eats it? Who is sick with pain mind? What is a pain mind? Pain mind is, pain mind is access, extreme imagination of pain. Extreme imagination of pain. When you are in pain, you imagine so many crazy things. In, inward, you can imagine so many th pain things. Outward, even in a destruction, destroying outside, bringing a harm in the situation, incredible imagination too. You know, I, I read uh, this uh, September 11 uh, uh, tragedy in New York. So that they did the incredible amount of research and, and uh, find um, what happened that time. And there was one, one conclusion, one in one sentence it says, the Americans were a lack of imagination. The conclusion was, we are lack of imagination. I, in a way, that means they are too advanced in pain imagination. When you have so much pain, you, you create so many different ways of destroying things. Is that too much imagination? What it brings? It's incredible disharmony in the world. So same way, sometimes you bring that outside, sometimes you can bring that inside. So inside, for example, um, that if you think about, oh, I wanted to do this, I wanted to do that, or I, this might happen to me, that might happen to me. So all this possible thing can happen to you. Possible thing can happen to you. This imagination, this pain is destroying you. It will happen. I'm, I'm going to get, it's possible I will get old. No, it's not possible. You will get old. It's possible I might get sick. It's not possible. You will get sick one day. It's possible this might, but it's all this possible. Why, why you have to destroy yourself with this possibility which, you're going to, which is going to come in the future? But your pain imagination imagines these things and destroy yourself. And, and basically, in the end of the day, pain imagination does not allow you to be free and happy. So what do you do? Once again, when you do that, recognize you're doing it. Recognize you're doing it. And that very moment, again, you open your bottle, invisible bottle, you know, free bottle, and take out the blue pill. And take the blue pill, and where the blue pill is, the spaciousness of your mind, the spaciousness in your heart. With that recognition of your pain mind, you breathe, breathe out, maybe three times. Usually it's enough effects. Three deep breathing is enough effect to breathe out those tensions that you are feeling in your mind, those imaginations that are coming out of those tensions and pain, breathe it out all and end of this exhalation, find space. A little space. This space, this space, this space, this space, big space. Whatever space you have, find that space. Let's say worst case, you don't have any space. At least you are aware. At least you are aware that this is my pain. Acknowledging this is my pain, and I don't see any space, I don't see any happiness, but I know it's there. You have a trust, its presence and its existence. Like when you have a long winter, raining, cold, dark, you know, spring is there. You know, sun is still shining. Your attention toward the sun and spring, and it will come, it's probably good enough for some of those people. Then having nothing. So that's how you take these three pills. So three, I call it three precious pills.